Today we have a really great full budget PC gaming setup, but not only that, I'm also gonna show you how to upgrade it in the future, or if you're just a little bit more baller and like some higher end products. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. You can see the full setup here. Everything is linked down in the description. No need to waste any more time, so let's jump straight into this parts list. We'll save the PC for last and start with the monitor. This here is the Biotech GFV 22CB. This is a 22 inch 1080p 144 hertz FreeSync and G-Sync compatible display. And this is kind of a hit or miss on Amazon as of late. It's been out of stock recently, but when it does pop in stock, it usually costs right under $130, which is a really great deal for what you're you're getting. Speaking of really great deals, our deals god Dr. Zoomer in the ZTT Discord server has been posting some killer monitor deals in there lately, along with PC hardware deals of course, and this is definitely the place to be if you're trying to save some money on your next gaming PC or gaming PC setup. Link is down in the description. Getting back to the biotech, unfortunately because of the budget price, the stand doesn't have much adjustment other than tilt, but there is a vase amount so you can add your own if you want to. And finally the display input lag is 5 milliseconds gray to gray which obviously isn't ideal if you're a professional esport athlete and you're getting paid to game at a really high level, but for everyone else, including myself, I had zero problems landing all of the headshots. Before moving on to the mouse, keyboard, and headset pack that Micro Center kindly sent out for today's setup guide, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by MMORC.com, a key reseller website that I teamed up with because they're offering the cheapest Windows 10 keys that I've seen so far, as well as a ton of other software keys. MMORC is offering you guys a super exclusive sale on the Windows Windows 10 keys, click that first link in the description and select add to cart, click place order, paste in the exclusive AF coupon code ZAH35, and that'll give you a massive 35% discount dropping the price to under $10. After that, select your payment method and complete your order. Once you get the key, click start on your PC and type in activate, press enter, change product key, paste in the key, and there you go, activated Windows 10 for less than 10 bucks. Once again, feel free to head down to the links in the description and use that exclusive 35% off coupon code ZAH35. All right, so yeah, let's jump into these other peripherals. First, we'll start with the mouse, and this is the HyperX Pulsefire Core, which is a pretty budget option, but I'm definitely a big fan of it. It comes in at just $25, and it's rocking two thumb buttons and two buttons underneath the scroll wheel. There's some RGBs on here, which can be controlled through HyperX's software, and it's rocking a symmetric design with a weight of around 87 grams. This is right in between those ultralight mouse and the heavier mice. This is a really good sweet spot if you don't know what weight mouse that you you like to use, which is perfect for a budget beginner setup. The Pulsefire Core is rocking a Pixar 3327 optical sensor with a DPI of up to 6200, and it's also sporting these larger mouse skates on the bottom, which are advertised as a feature, but I personally didn't really like them. They're supposed to give you a super smooth gliding experience, but honestly, when I was gaming, I felt that there was just extra friction on the mouse, and I wasn't a big fan of it. This obviously isn't a 100% deal breaker, especially for only costing 25 bucks, but definitely something to be aware of. Now I do have an exciting upgrade alternative. This is also from HyperX and this is the Pulsefire Surge. This one goes for $33, so it's not much more expensive, but this does have an upgraded Pixar 3389 sensor with a DPI of up to 16,000, Omron switches, and overall just felt much better to use on the mouse pad. The skates at the bottom are a little smaller than the cores and even though it weighs 100 grams, I felt much more accurate sniping with this one compared to the core. There's also an RGB lighting ring that goes fully around the mouse for 360 degrees overall coverage and looks pretty neat if that's what you're into. Moving on, we get to the keyboards, which we also have an upgrade path for, but we'll start with the budget one for now, and this is the HyperX Alloy Core RGB. This is a budget full-size wired keyboard, which usually sits on Amazon for around $40, but has dropped multiple times down to just $30. It's rocking the signature HyperX light bar up at the top with multiple RGB lighting effects, which are controlled right on the keyboard itself, and I'm definitely a fan of all the media keys, which we have here in the upper right. It's also spill resistant, which is perfect for messy gamers, and by the the way, comment down below if you've ever spilled something on your keyboard and ruined it. Hopefully I'm not the only one. Now this Alloy Core RGB is unfortunately a membrane switch option, obviously not ideal for someone who has already jumped into the world of mechanical switches, but for a $30 keyboard, if this is your first option, you'll probably be perfectly fine with it. With that being said, of course I gotta hit you with a mechanical option, also quite a bit more expensive, and this is the HyperX Alloy Elite 2. This one usually sits on Amazon for $130, but has dropped down to $100 before. It's rocking the same RGB light bar up at the top. The frame is super rugged and built out of steel. And I also really like the beefier 
your media controls with the volume dial in the upper right. This keyboard also has these putting keycaps, which really allow the RGB colors to shine through, almost like the keycaps are just like floating up in the clouds. It's a really cool effect. Underneath the keycaps, these are HyperX's own mechanical switches, and I really like the feel to them as they're nice and quick, not too loud and obnoxious either. We definitely had some good keyboard options here, but now it's time to turn to the headsets, which aren't new products by any means, but these older classics are still both very recommended here in 2021. First up, we have the budget option, and this is the HyperX Cloud Stinger, which usually sets for $40, but can be found for as low as $30, which is some crazy value. I actually made a dedicated video for this headset literally years ago, and in that video, I said that they are the best performing and definitely the most comfortable gaming headset under $50. That honestly still holds true for the most part today, as these are a super great option, and I can't recommend them enough. They have a really lightweight feeling to them and are super comfortable with the memory foam ear pads. They're also packing 50 millimeter drivers with clean audio and the directional quality is also great for the price. The volume control is on the ear cup itself with no inline remote and you can mute the microphone by simply pushing it all the way up. Moving on, we have the upgraded version of the Stinger and that's obviously these HyperX Cloud 2s which are yet another really great option for this lineup. These usually cost around $90 but did go on a crazy sale down to $59 recently so keep your eyes open for a deal like that. These are even more comfortable than the Stingers and I remember these being the pinnacle of headset comfort a few years ago and they're obviously still great. This is a 7.1 surround sound headset with some heavy bass which is what I like. They sound great. There's also this super sick black and red aesthetic, a detachable noise canceling microphone, but the problem is that it just doesn't sound that good. Both of these headset microphones actually don't sound that great for the price. They're just a little bit outdated. It's perfectly fine for like a discord call, but if you want a somewhat decent audio quality for your live streams for example, you probably want to look elsewhere. Another thing I really like about the Cloud 2s though is the ear pad option. In the box they include this softer velvet like material pad so you have the option. Very nice touch for a sub $100 headset. And moving on the last part we have here before the gaming PC is the mouse pad and this I actually featured a few videos ago but it looks great and it's cheap so I wanted to use it again. This is from a brand called Hoke Elite. It costs $11 and in my opinion it looks pretty sick for a red and black color scheme. Before getting into the gaming PC I just want to give a quick shout out to Micro Center for hooking us up with all of the HyperX peripherals today. Micro Center is my personal favorite place to go for the best PC hardware and PC peripheral deals and links to everything we talk about from them today is linked down in the description. With that being said, we finally do get to the gaming PC and if you haven't seen already, I actually made a dedicated video for this last week up in this video here and in that video, I had to tackle a Call of Duty Warzone gaming challenge which was pretty entertaining. In that video, I also show off the full parts list and benchmarking run so make sure you check that out if you're interested but for this video, I'll give the quick rundowns for both of those. For specs, it has an Intel i3-9100, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a GTX 960 2 gigabyte GPU, and that's all inside the Corsair 4000D. These honestly weren't meant to be build guide specs per se, kind of just had some extra parts that I had laying around the studio, but it did make for a somewhat impressive budget gaming PC. For some quick benchmarks, this PC can run Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War in 1080p low at 68 FPS, Valorant in 1080p medium got 197 FPS, CSGO in 1080p Pro scored 247, Rainbow Six Siege in 1080p low got 171, and finally Fortnite in 1080p Pro got 171 as well. Be sure to let me know what you thought of this full PC gaming setup guide down below. Also, feel free to click the video that's on the screen now, and that'll give you a little bit more upgraded version of this setup. Obviously, a little bit more expensive, but either way, I hope you enjoyed this video.